Hello and welcome to yet another tournament recap. This time it's for the big money, the Bunsen Crucible. The Crucible is held every other week on Bunsen stream, so make sure to check it out. This Crucible had everything. A big prize pool of $420, crazy mods, handicaps, cheating accusations, a 41 second game and drama about the final ranking. But when the dust settled, I think we can look back at a fun tournament with a solid performance of all competitors. As there are a lot of matches played in this Crucible, I will cast one match which has a lot of action and is a lot of fun to watch. It is one of the final matches, both players are within the money winning range and it's all about who can go home with the biggest earning. So without further ado, let's jump into the game. And we're off in this great matchup. On Watch My Back between Eaton and Matteo. Eaton is team 1, playing on the left hand side, and Matteo is team 2, play, playing on the right hand side. Both commanders are Pinch, which sort of is the go to choice, I think, for very competitive matches. Uh, because it's very versatile and I think they can use it uh, on this map because you have a lot of metal on the starting bases well maybe not a lot but still something you could uh, safely sell and the setup is very um, challenging I think they are playing co-op because this is a 2v2 map and they'll need to manage two forts and they're actually fairly close with a top sniper to snipe any AA. And it seems they're going for the same build. With um, uh, rockets in the front. And Eaton is very quick with uh, getting his rockets out. I think that is because Matteo went for a little bit more eco. It's, it's a risk. But a minimalistic build, just building only what's necessary. And I think Eaton uh, takes the cake when it comes to that. Uh, Matteo is also uh, leaving uh, some gaps, some fresh air for his, uh, for his rockets. Now, apart from being very close and having two forts, there is also the backside with portals, which are linked to the other backside. So you could fight on two fronts. That's why there is a sniper here, looking the other way. And if you're greedy, you could even sell off this door. Maybe sell off a node on the bottom. Getting even more gains. Oh, the weapons are out. A huge hit for Eden. As he rushed them out, three rockets. This is doing a lot of damage. That's that's crazy. I think Matteo is instantly on the back foot. Having his bus off, not doing too much. I think he was too focused on the rockets because the bus saw here would have been devastating for Eden. Also Eden rocking the double sniper. This is this is a fairly classic matchup, I think, because Eaton and Matteo have seen each other multiple times in tournaments, even in finals. And I'm not sure which player uh, takes the upper hand usually, but I must say it's very close. Oh, using the uh, reflective mod. So. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on? Something we've not talked about yet. Um, this um, there's also a mod enabled, which is reflective terrain, and it makes the projectiles bounce around until they hit something, anything. So all the terrain is reflective. And right now, it's hard to tell, but I think. 
I think Mateo is actually having uh, the upper hand now. Oh, it, it's fairly equal. But I think it's the first time that we see these top tier players battling it out on, on such a strange map with strange mods for money. Because there is something at the line here. Which is a total price pool of $420. Which is, considering it's forts, it's pretty huge. Pretty huge. And Mateo actually has built something back here. A huge hit on the front for Mateo. He just ate it straight in the face. Still no core damage though. So Eden is focused on the uh, taking out the other rockets, just brute forcing his way in. Hardly any gunners because the snipers are so close and very accurate. I'm not sure what happens if Eden decides to go for the eco here. Because Matteo has the eco to just out repair this fairly easily. Ah, sneaky! Going for the back, the back rockets. For now, EMP is upgrading them immediately. Let's see. This this will come in unexpected, I think. Also, the curses. I decided to leave them on because it's the uh, also rocking the improved cursor position mod, which should give an indication of where the mouse for each player is. As you can see, it's jumping up and down, hopping around. There we go. Oh, the sneak, sneak attack. Very brave without doors. Sorry, fairly clever. I think he should have aimed a little bit higher though. Because the only thing he hit was root spam. But so far, I think the, the players could use the reflective terrain a bit more. Be more creative with it. Especially Ethan, he's just hammering the front. Which is quite easy for um, Matteo to repair. He could be um, lobbing them up. And bouncing them around. And Matteo gets in core damage. Which is big. All this, all this damage here and no core hit. And Matteo just fires three volleys and deals core damage. And I think we have to uh, address this to both of the players not have been playing this map a lot. So they're just now finding out what is, what is the best way here. Finally, Ethan is going for the, the back base and doing a lot of damage so the next volley might cut, cut this off almost getting it but Mateo is able to save this selling off his technology also going for a resource plant <laughs> how does he get the resources what is this magic And the bouncing rocket takes more for health. This is just a mess. Very, very messy game. But that's that's both in the ballpark of these players. Who are very creative and have high mechanical skills. So they uh, can come up with something on the fly. So far, I, I really like Ethan's position, but it doesn't seem he has, he has an endgame plan so far. He's not tacking into anything tier 2 right now. He's just hoping to destroy with, uh, with his rockets. But Matteo 
Although he's taking a lot of damage, he has been very successful in not taking core damage. As I say, he's taking core damage. So this could be a problem for him. And more, more core damage for Eaton as well. By the uh, bouncing rockets. So I'm not sure which player is ahead right now. That's a huge hit. I think the lack of economy is hurting Eaton. And he has built his turbines down, so I don't think he will be uh, room for extra mines. This is a very close game. Yeah. This is just boot spam right now. And I think Mateo is buying time. Because right here, this, this might be the game ender. A cannon. It just boggles my mind that with everything that's happening, Matteo was able to tack into uh, the munitions plant. <laughs> and Ethan is hitting himself. Nice one. He's able to tack into the munitions plant and build a cannon. I mean, Pinch, I, I think Pinch is paying off because he was able to sell his, his technology and maybe something else and afford a cannon. And I don't think Ethan is expecting this. Because this is just a one-shot kill right here. And then it's pretty much GG. If that happens. So let's see if uh, Matteo is able to uh, hold on. So far. Well... If you look at the APM, well, there is a huge hit and doing some core damage, but not not life threatening uh, right now. The peak. There it is! A cannon shot taking out one of the cores of each. Wow! That was amazing. Very well played by Matteo. And I think Eden will realize it now. He, uh, he has no resources to, de to defend against a cannon. There's no way for him to come back, actually. Yeah, taking out his rockets. He's deleting them. There's no, no way to, uh, to get back in control. The cannon is untouchable. Well, he could snipe him from the back if he had still had a sniper. But then one wooden strut would easily save the cannon. And he's just letting it burn. Wow, what a game! Well played by Matteo. GG!